Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Project Time Tech. Today, we're in my camper because we have some networking to do in here. Well, I'm not putting a full-on silly network in here, but I do want to put some conveniences in here. Maybe uh, an easier way to connect to Wi-Fi at campgrounds. You know, we have uh, we have TV to be watched. And, uh, you know, people like to check their email and, and things, and it's nice when you control your own network and you're not and you're not relying on uh, a lot of ever-changing uh, aspects of the network. Our goal is to build something that's that's relatively simple that never changes. Now, I know what you're gonna say. I I've heard it a million times. Dude, you're in a camper, you're camping. Forget the TVs and the phones and stuff like that. Yeah, well, if it were just my wife and I, I would agree with you. But when you have kids running around, particularly when maybe the weather's not great, or they're starting to get tired, um, that's not a good reality. Uh, you know, you can't just hand them a stick and say, go play with it, you know. Not in this day and age, not like my parents did with me. Um, anyway, uh, especially like even when it's raining, when it's rainy outside and there's really nothing to do, it's nice for the kids to come in and, you know, turn on the TV and watch some TV or something like that. So that's cool. Um, now, I will tell you that for the most part, we keep them off their devices and make them go and run and frolic and play. Behind me on the table here is the equipment that we're going to be putting in here today. And none of this equipment is brand new. None of this equipment was bought for the purpose of this camper. Uh, I basically scavenged pieces and parts from other jobs and uh, th that were left over. Uh, other projects or even around my house that were left over. And those are the things I'm going to use here today. So let's go over to the table and let me kind of show you what we've got and what we're going to work with here today. And then I'll let me lay out my goals for this, this little thing and what I want to see out of it. And then we'll get to get to work, put it in. So let's go check it out. Well, let me go over really quick the goals that I have for this project and the things that I expect to get out of this project. Um, first and foremost, I want a Wi-Fi network in my camper that never changes. A static Wi-Fi network that I can join one time with any of the devices that happen to be camping with me or around me and that will automatically reconnect to that network every single time. You see, if if we just go to the park networks, they have captive portal there, and every single device that you intend to use must be reconnected every day, right? So the captive portal expires in 24 hours, so you got to go and re-up. And that's great for, you know, the phones and the handhelds and things like that. But what if you want to watch some TV? What if, say, for example, what if you want to be cooking breakfast and you want to pop the TV on out there in the kitchen and just watch the news while you're waiting on the bacon to fry and you're sipping your morning coffee? That's nice, right? Or what if you want to take your projector and sit it out by the fire and have, like, family movie night on a projector screen out by the fire? That's cool, too. Well, the way you're going to do that is you're going to, be connected to Wi-Fi, but the problem is, how do you do that? You know, uh, in our case, we use uh, Google Chromecast devices because our primary TV is Hulu, and Hulu doesn't do well with that whole um, using it away from home thing, right? They want you to be, you know, in the same geographical area that, that your plan exists at. Otherwise, it asks you if you've moved. But if you're using it with a Chromecast, and you take your good old trusty cell phone and bring up something on Hulu and cast it to a Chromecast that's connected to a TV or a projector or whatever, it works just fine. Uh, so that's that's the idea of having the static um, wireless SSID that you know is never going to change for us. That's the first thing. The second thing is I want a a, a backup means. I want a I want failover internet in my camper. Has anyone ever said that before? I don't think so. Anyway, I want failover internet in my camper. And this particular Asus uh, device, in fact, I think a lot of the Asus devices actually do this. Um, they allow for uh, backup or, or, or failover internet through the USB port. So in my case, I have a spare cell phone on AT&T. It's activated, has a SIM card, unlimited data plan. So that phone pretty much lives in the camper all the time anyway, because we've had a couple of situations where phones were uh, inoperative, lost, wet, dead, whatever. Uh, think, think about going fishing waist deep 
with your phone in your pocket and forgetting about it. Stuff like that happens. A spare phone, really nice. Uh, but when that spare phone is just sitting on the shelf 99.87% of the time, why not do something cool with it? So my thought is I'm going to USB connect this cell phone to this Asus router. And for those instances where we do go to, to parks that don't have Wi-Fi, uh, and there are quite a few of them out there that have absolutely zero coverage, uh, anything that I've been to that's U.S. Army Corps of Engineers doesn't offer any kind of park services like that. So if you go there and you're going to be there for, say, four or five days, you got a cell phone. Well, if you got a means of a failover internet, then you've got this. And I'm not going to use it as failover. If I go to a park that it doesn't that doesn't have it, I'm just going to kick the phone on and plug it in and go like that. So that satisfies these two things right here. Satisfy the requirement of static Wi-Fi and uh, backup internet. What am I going to do about my primary means of communication? Well, that's where this comes in. This is an M2 uh, nano station. I didn't go out and buy this nano station for this project. This already existed. This again was in the supply closet and I'm not 100% sure it even works, but I think it does. I'm sure it does, hopefully it does. Uh, probably should check that. Anyway, the idea is this. I'm going to put this thing up somewhere in the camper and when I get to a park, I will hop on the Wi-Fi network of the camper, log into the nano station and you know, join whatever wireless network is best, you know, for me at that point. I'll just have that bridged out the the uh, the primary LAN port right into the WAN port of the ASUS. So at that point, when I arrive at a park, really all I should have to do is log in, find the park SSID I want to join, hit join. No password on those, they're always open, so it should be pretty easy. And my camper should have Wi-Fi. The cool thing about that is the way the captive portal works since it's only a single MAC address that's been presented, as soon as you take any device and accept that captive portal, all devices are good to go. So that makes life even easier for us. So now I have the requirement of static SSID, primary internet, and a failover internet, for instance, where there is no internet. Those are taken care of. What about watching TV? How are we doing that? Well, like I said before, I have a Google Chromecast, uh, and I have one on each TV. Currently, we have the main TV in the living room. We also have one in the back bunks, and we also have one out in the outdoor kitchen area. This is where I spend most of my time. Additionally, we have this little cheap Amazon projector, which does a remarkably good job, by the way. So here's a sub requirement that I have. I just happen to have a, a Raspberry Pi. I think this is a B plus. I've got like, I think I've got a hundred bright Raspberry Pis laying around doing various things. This one already has the USB dongle in it. And um, in fact, it even has a, uh, it even has a micro SD card held in by what appears to be a wad of paper. I would like to have this also on the network running Kodi or running open elect or open running something media center related because I would like to be able to watch local media that's already in the camper also. Oh, we haven't talked about the local media and the biggest thing on the table yet, have we? No, we haven't. <laughs> this is a Netgear ReadyNAS uh, 400, 10, 400 RN, RN 10400. This used to be in my house. This was where I kept all of my movies and documents and things like that. It still contains all that information as well. It's currently loaded with four four terabyte uh, Seagate Ironwolf drives in it, and it's it's a healthy NAS. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, like I said, it has a current copy of all of my or a reasonably current copy of everything that used to be in my house. Uh, if you watched the other video where I changed out my home network, uh, I changed out to a Synology Rack Mount NAS, and um, I had a Synology NAS even before that. Well, prior to that Synology NAS, this was in play. So this is what I was using. Um, I would like to bring this out to the camper and 
find a home for it so that the Raspberry Pi can access the videos and music and all that stuff off of it. There's actually there's a, just a straight ton of music on this thing too that you know I've curated over the past 20 years. Since my camper is parked at my home and very close to my house, it's not a stretch to just connect the camper to my home Wi-Fi and set up this NAS to do a nightly backup job or a weekly backup job or something and actually refresh all of the data, movies, music, I'm thinking documents, pictures, things like that, things that you wouldn't want to lose in the event of, say, a house fire. It's not a stretch to be able to uh, do a backup from the house over to here and that keeps all this content fresh, right? So um, backups are, are redundancy is key, right? So the more backups, the better. Uh, I already have a backup going down to my shop. We'll talk about that in a future video, but this is another means. So um, I'd like to have that as another requirement as well. Okay, so that's probably enough covering this. Let me show you what is, where I'm planning on putting this stuff and how I'm planning on setting it all up. Well, that's kind of a proof of concept there. There was already a GoPro mount uh, sort of on this thing. I hope we broken one. So I just quickly stuck a GoPro mount here and one over here. We'll see how that works. Maybe not the best looking thing. I'm sure I'll have to come up with something else, but it's a start. It's it's a it's a starting point. I'm sure I'll refine it. Probably. Probably not. As far as location of equipment, I'm gonna put all of that under the TV here, I think. You know, there's already some junk under here already. Also, I have a HDMI cable that's already ran down here from the TV. I used to have a media source down here that I could just, you know, kind of pop up on the TV quickly. And um, as far as power, all of it comes up here. I went ahead and stuck this um, this thing up here. We'll see how that works. But um, for now, that's, that's what we've got. Um, unfortunately, I've got a lot of power demands here. The TV is going to have to have power. And the injector for this guy is going to have to have power. My Asus and my NAS are both going to have to have power. So I think what I can do is maybe put the power for the TV and the Asus up here, because I, I think I'm going to try to tuck the Asus just right behind here to have the antennas high in the, in the uh, camper. I think I'll try that. So that'll get two of my power things here. I'm going to have to have some way of running uh, an extension cord from here all the way down through this hole, which goes behind the radio, but nice huge cavity back there and pops out under there. So I've got to get uh, that done too. I think I might be able just to tuck this back here like that. Yep, I can do that. That, that will actually work pretty good. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look terrible either. It actually stays remarkably well up there. I'm, very surprised about that. As far as powering it up, let's make, let's see what that looks like. Luckily, uh, their power cord is, is pretty good for this situation. It's not one of those big, huge things with extra cords and cables hanging off of it. It's really not that bad. I think I can do it like this right here. Now we'll just let the cables hang like that. That look good. No, no, it doesn't. Well, that's where the Velcro tape enters the scene. I go through this stuff like water. I'm actually going to just put it, probably put it up like that and just let it dangle right there because it's not going to be visible at that point. And it makes it a little more serviceable. I don't want to get everything all tied together back there because there's a good chance that I'll be fiddling with this at some point. So I want to try to keep it as easy and as clean as I can. All right. Um, I guess the next step is we need to get the uh, the nano beam or the nano stations. I have nano beams and nano stations both. I have a, a couple of places where I have nano beams in place. So if I call this a nano beam, forgive me because I'm thinking about something other than proper terminology. So sorry about that in advance. The nano thing here is uh, next thing we need to power up. We need to figure out how we're going to do that exactly. 
Too bad I don't have a Ubiquiti switch in here. Otherwise, this would be easy. In this case, these things are 24 volt AC, I believe, still. And um, they need an injector. Well, that's the first segment taken care of. Um, we have the Asus up here. I have, uh, I've, I just went ahead and made a custom length cable. I even put a little red end on it to denote, this is when I like to color coordinate. You should see my wardrobes. On second thought, you probably should. So that runs down to the power injector that is behind the TV here. And, oh, beautiful day outside. From the power injector, I am running over to the radio here. So that's a basic setup at this point done. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the Nano Beam and the Asus and get those configured. And uh, once I get them set up, I'll go back over my settings and show you guys what I have, okay? All right, the base configuration is done on this now. And um, here's what here's where I am. At this point, I can pop open my internet browser because I'm connected to my network. There it is. Connected. I can pop in there and I can go into, I can jump into my Nano Station. And this is sitting on the WAN side of my Asus, right? There we go. While I'm at it, let me go ahead and bring up the Asus. All right, here we are. So we're connected to the Asus. My primary WAN's connected, and there's my radio. The setup I did on this um, under network was this. My network mode is set to router. My WAN interface I'm using is WAN-O. And I'm going to have a statically assigned DHCP address from whoever I'm talking to on the other end. For my LAN interface, which is basically bridged to the WAN, I have, uh, I've given it a static IP address of 172.16.220.254. That's so I can reach it every time, and I know that address never changes. So when I get to a park, really the only thing I have to do is get on the, the, the wireless network that this ASUS has given me and go to this 192.168.220.254 address. Um, if you'll see, I'm, I have, I've told this thing to run a DHCP server. I've told the DHCP service of this thing to uh, hand out 220.1 and only 220.1 to whatever client uh, were to, were to uh, require a connection to it. And that one client is going to be this Asus wireless WAN port. That's the only thing that should ever ask for an address from this. So basically, the uh, the router is um, on the wireless side. It's set as a station. And I can go out and hit select. And I see all of these radios here that are, you know, options for me to connect to. I basically, I'm just going to pick the, the, the very best uh, signal to noise ratio that I can find. And I'm going to select that one and it'll, it'll just connect. Once it connects, it's just basically going to bridge that traffic right across into the WAN connection of my, uh, my Asus. So pretty simple stuff. Also, I've done a couple more things here that are, I guess, somewhat noteworthy. I've gone ahead and set up some port forwarding in this, and I've done this basically only, basically only for my house, I guess. So basically, I've I've forwarded port one thousand four four five eight seventy three and forty four thirty uh, directly to whatever uh, directly to the uh, WAN interface of this ASUS, and I've done that in order to be able to reach to reach devices that are inside the camper um, when it's at home, basically. So. I have a DHCP reservation for the WAN interface of the nano station when I'm here at home. So when I hit that IP address on say 44 or 445, I get the ASUS's main login page in order to um, in order to manage it. Um, also, I can uh, I can get into other things on the network, and I'm going to show you that here in just a minute too. So at this point, it is connected. Um, 
I have uh, I have internet. I can jump to a. Quick speed test. And I'm I'm doing fine and dandy for what's going on here. For a camper connection, this is awesome. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so we have a couple of requirements that have already been met. We can connect somewhat easily to different uh, Wi-Fi services. And um, we have a static uh, Wi-Fi SSID and password that exists inside this uh, this camper or in the vicinity of this camper. The next thing we should work on is our um, our failover internet because I don't think that's going to be very hard. So let's have a look at that real quick. Over here on the dual WAN, I've enabled that and I've said that my primary WAN is the WAN port, which is the one that is being served by my uh, my Ubiquity Nano Station. Secondary is going to be USB. And the dual WAN mode is going to be failover. And it's going to check every five seconds. And basically, I, it's, I think these are all defaults. When the WAN's down for 12 seconds, failover. And when the primary is detected to come back up for four continuous seconds or four continuous pings, um, bring it back. So that is all done. Let's, let's go over here and plug this up and give it a whirl, shall we? Well... What we have here is a, a USB plug from the ASUS all the way down to the floor there. When we plug this up, nothing should happen because my primary WAN is still connected. Now, let's fail the primary WAN and see what happens. I'll do that by just unplugging this. All right. So it's gonna take 12 seconds, supposedly, for this to happen, network cables unplugged, and uh, we're standby on our second WAN. So we'll just give it a few seconds and see what happens. Still standby, no internet in the camper. I think the reason this hasn't gone yet is because when you plug something in, oh yeah, here we go. This is important. Uh, I'm, when I plug in, this thing automatically goes to charging. You can tap for more options and choose USB tethering. That should help things. And look, we immediately made a change up here. That immediately changed something. So we should start going to our secondary network here pretty quick. All right. Well, we see now that our secondary WAN has connected. And if I jump out to maybe a quick speed test, What are we going to get, like five? <laughs> no, it's not bad. 30, 30 megabits, something like that. Not bad at all. And with that going on, we can see that all we have is our USB and nothing else is plugged into this thing at that point. We're definitely on the uh, on the, the phone, the cell phone. That's good. I went ahead and took the USB cable and just sort of tucked it around and ran it behind the TV and just brought it out right there so in the event we need to use it we can just basically lay our cell phone there and plug it in and that should be good that'll also probably be handy for charging the cell phone when you know when it's just laying up there just a quick charge point so that should be cool too okay check another thing off the list there um i guess the next thing to do is deploy some of this stuff on the TVs and make sure all the TVs are able to work. So I'm going to go around and put Google Chromecasts everywhere and we'll come back and have a look at that. Okay, we have our Roku, uh, Roku's put on everything and I've got Hulu pulled up. I'm on the same Wi-Fi network as the, the uh, Roku's are and look at some live TV here. Go with that. And we should be able to cast that to the main TV, which is the front one here. There we go. Super. Also, if we go to the TV in the back bunks here, I'll stop casting from the front TV. 
I should be able to connect to the Buck TV. And watch something. Oh, too many videos. Must be somebody in the house watching TV too. How about this? We should be able to play something back here. Maybe some Netflix this time or something. There we go. Cool. So that works. What about the outdoor? Awesome. Uh, this one is going to be the kitchen TV. Play. Awesome. All right. Well, so far, I would say we are having some success. We've got almost everything that we were required done. The next two things that we want to deal with is going to be the NAS and the media player. So let's let's knock that out. All right. Well, we have um, we have OSMC. That's the media center that I'm running down on this uh, on this little guy here that we talked about earlier. It already had OSMC on it, so I just ran with it. Why reinvent the wheel when there's a perfectly good wheel? I have all the directories set up on it down to the NAS and everything appears to be working pretty well. I love that the, the remote for the TV also works too. That's, that's really, really neat. Um, really neat. But anyway, yeah. Um, lots of good stuff there. Pretty cool. And while I was at it, I went ahead and took a minute and put some split loom on uh, on all these wires here. Tried to do a little bit at the top there, but it's just the way those wires have to bend and come down. Yeah, it, you get what you get, and that's about all you get. But, uh, but yeah, I think overall, it does not look too terribly bad. I think that's exactly what we were looking for. Okay, uh, I guess the last thing we're going to work on is uh, getting the NAS set up to uh, pull backups from my house and make sure all that's set up. At that point, we've basically got our camper network up and going. Okay, I've gone in and I have taken care of the backup jobs. And basically what I'm doing is for each one of these, I'm basically just connecting out to my, uh, my NAS with a read-only user account that I created um, that only has the ability to basically read and pull data. And for, for the destination, I'm basically just uh, putting it in the exact same share that it, it, it's named in, uh, in the original source. And as far as schedules go on these, I've basically set all of them up to run uh, at eight o'clock in the morning on a Monday. And basically, the, the system will just jump in here and just, you know, line them out and it'll go. Um, it'll take a while for them to get done, especially the uh, the pictures directory, because a lot of stuff tends to change there. Uh, the documents directory, not so much changes. So that goes pretty quick. Uh, you'll see the, the date stamp and the failures where... Uh, where I had uh, I had this thing on my home network at one point, just doing a quick backup, like letting it back up, and it looks like I took that and unplugged it maybe on December the nineteenth of twenty twenty two. That's probably the last time this NAS unit had been turned on, would be my guess. But anyway, um, I have it set up, and documents is my most important thing, so um, that's running. So we've taken care of a lot of things here this morning. Our network is up. Um, it's easy to connect to uh, to different Wi-Fi options if we're going somewhere uh, to get TV in the in the camper. We have our wireless here so that everything in the vicinity can see wireless. The quality seems to be pretty good. It's fast. Have our failover internet because let's face it, campers just need failover internet. We have our NAS unit here for a uh, local copy of, of pictures and movies and, and, and music and that type stuff. Um, also, taking care of that backup from our house just as a, an added bonus backup destination 
And we have our OSMC media player and we're controlling it with, uh, with Core on our phone. So that works out pretty well too. So all in all, I would say that's a pretty well-rounded um, network for, uh, for a lowly camper. So that's gonna wrap up this little project. Hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, it's a fun little project. So until next time, thanks for watching.